I am Jessica Singh and I'd like to welcome you to our documentary to celebrate National Science Week. And we are so privileged to bring you this documentary, which is going to exhibit what science means to the University of Limpopo and our community. And this year, this uh, documentary is being brought to you uh, amidst very difficult circumstances. And in that, we want to virtually portray to you what we as a university do to celebrate Science Week and also our involvement in Science Week activities. We're bringing you this documentary in partnership with the Department of Science and Innovation and together with our internal partners at the university, the various departments that are contributing to this documentary. In our exhibition, of the various centers, we're going to bring you our materials modeling center, our Limpopo Agri-Food Technology Station, together with other uh, uh, divisions of the university, that is our DiMamo division, which is our population uh, health division. Uh, here we do research on population health and we feed into the National Atlas. So in celebration of National Science Week 2021, uh, from the 1st to the 7th of August, we are showing you at the University of Limpopo exactly what we are engaged in as a university. And we are so proud to work with our communities with the whole idea of uplifting science within the UL environment. From now on, we are going to see the documentary unfolding as Professor Nguepe explains the structure of the Materials Modeling Center as well as other activities thereof. Three areas we work in are minerals and minerals processing, light and precious metals alloys, and the area of energy storage, which is on batteries. And the tools that we use are mainly the software and the PC clusters and the high-performance computing facilities that are based in Cape Town. And these are the products that we are looking at, at the, and students, publications, conference papers, and intellectual properties. Our server at UN, we have seen the server room. When it was launched, it was the 120th in the top 500 uh, worldwide. What we are doing is to model across what we call length and time scales quantum mechanical calculations, which handle 100 atoms or 200 atoms. And you have the semi-empirical approaches, which enable you to handle close to 10,000 atoms to 50,000 atoms. And then you have the classical models, which enable you to model a million atoms up to 10 million. Now they are sort of gunning towards 20 billion atoms. Now, when you do that, then you come very, very, very close to what you are able to see experimentally on the nanoscale mesoscale, etc. Now, in the area of mineral processing, our main focus is in the Limpopo. We are working on what we call the Bushveld complex, the north limb of the Bushveld complex, which is found in Kopani and Mohalakwena, Ivan Platz mine and the Waterbeck. And there we are looking at uh, the reefs because the chemistry of those uh, minerals is not yet well understood. And therefore, we have to design new reagents which will optimize the extraction uh, in that area. And so the PhD students uh, work uh, in that area. And the main thing is to sort of use modeling plus experiments. In experiments, we work with UCT, who do some uh, experiments there. But we also work with Beijing Aspring, which is the main tech of China, who are highly specialized in designing reagents. So the combination of modeling and the design of these materials, we model first and suggest the new products and they go and do the synthesis. And once the synthesis has been done, then UCT does uh, some of the experiments. And then from there, then we do the rotation until we get what is ideally uh, suited for the extraction. And the metal alloy development. After you have extracted the minerals, like the precious metals, you don't want to export them as they are. You want to add value to them so that you can, the country can export high value materials. And this is where the metal alloy development comes in. And here we work within the program of the DSI, which is the Titanium Competency Center, whose uh, center is at the CSIR. And then we design the different types of material uh, where they do the shape memory alloys, you know, which can remember 
uh, the shape of uh, the materials if you bend them, turbine blinds and catalysis which are used in ordinary cars. Hello, my name is Dr. K.W. Koshoko and I'm with my colleague Dr. K.M. Hatwani. We are systems managers here at the Materials Modeling Center at the University of Limpopo. We are responsible for managing the Hartford's computing housed at the Materials Modeling Center and supporting a group of researchers as well as postgraduate students who are doing computational materials, material science. So here with, we, we are inside the data center already and perhaps I can quickly indicate that a data center is a technical facility that is very critical to the day-to-day -day running activities of the university in as far as uh, simulations are, are concerned, computational material science is concerned and it uses a lot of uh, IT equipment that may be common to our day-to-day -day interfaces. Typically, you will find an array of servers that are grouped. Each of them represents what may be seen as a small computer, but then the idea here is to put them all together such that they can help us with the number crunching. So the uh, use of those researchers uh, and uh, students make use of these systems to be able to predict material properties to be able to help experiments, to be able to look at how uh, minerals. In, in, in the center, we look at various themes of research. One is mineral beneficiations, metal development, energy storage technology development. So we use uh, uh, artificial intelligence powered techniques through which users are able to do research and study those properties. So, but at the background, these are the systems that do the number crunching. You, they are equipped with fast network, uh, they are equipped with very fast to, uh, processors and the space for which the data is stored. And because the nature of this environment is that it has to run uh, 365 uh, days a year as well as 24-7, there is a need to have environment monitoring. As you will feel, it's a bit cold, uh, so it's because that there's, there needs to be cooling. So a data center will need to be equipped with uh, cooling units, it needs backup power, it needs environment monitoring, and then it, it needs all other systems that are in, important for optimizing so that they can work efficiently. So what we do here, we not only use them for material science, but we also have certain older servers that we use to train students, and we train them to participate in supercomputing uh, challenges. Uh, my name is Dr. Nukungwepe. Uh, by profession, I'm a metallurgical engineer. So I've uh, also done uh, some work in chemical engineering. Uh, but we mainly focus on material science, uh, specifically in this project. So we are a part of the materials modeling center but we specifically focus on the synthesis of uh, battery grade materials. Uh, these battery grade materials were used for lithium ion batteries, which are mainly used for electric vehicles, um, but also for power tools, uh, laptops, uh, you know, um, and several other uh, unique applications. Um, so my responsibilities are really, um, you know, research, firstly, to develop uh, research and development, to develop these uh, battery grid materials uh, at the laboratory scale uh, to, the, to pilot scale. Um, and secondly, we, you know, I also manage uh, several uh, labs which are dedicated for that specific purpose. Uh, we also do some research, so we, we do like, uh, you know, uh, supervision of students um, at postgraduate level, so honors, masters, uh, doctoral students, uh, but we also collaborate with uh, postdoctoral uh, students um, who, you know, do computational work uh, locally at the university. Uh, we also have collaborations outside the university with uh, other uh, institutions such as, you know, uh, NEXA, um, CSIR, uh, Nelson Mandela University, um, and several other universities uh, locally, but also internationally, you know, in America and China, we also have uh, international partners. 
So we are a DSI funded project, the Department of Science and Innovation. And you know, we are part of the pilot, or well, the manganese uh, pilot uh, plant group, uh, which uh, develops uh, materials based on locally available uh, resources. Okay, so most of our work uh, is centered around uh, this uh, four liter reactor system. Uh, so to operate a system like this, you'd really have to have a you know, background in either chemical engineering or you know, uh, material science, uh, that, that type of uh, uh, background. Um, so it's a four liter system where we control you know, several variables at the same time to produce um, you know, a, a specific, you know, specific type of materials. And when I say specific, there are different type of chemistries of lithium ion batteries we deal with. Uh, so to give you a practical example, you know, there, there are cars which are commercially available, such as the BMW i3, BMW i8, uh, which use a specific chemistry of, of these materials that, that are produced. So those ones would have uh, you know, what we call nickel, manganese, and cobalt uh, compositions of varying uh, degrees. Oh, oh, that's the chemical composition of the battery. Uh, we are developing the next generation of, of, uh, of, of that type of battery. Uh, that battery was invented in the United States, uh, uh, in Chicago, by a group we, we, we work with. Um, but, but the next generation of, of materials are such that you, know, you require your cars to have what we call a high energy density and, and, and power density as well. So those two factors determine how far your car can go, but also how powerful your car is. So when you compare a battery car to, to, to an engine combustion uh, vehicle, uh, you, know, you want your, your, your car batteries to have similar or better performance than what's currently available. And the costs are gradually going down, meaning that you know, the world is slowly transitioning towards uh, electric, you know, battery electric vehicles and uh, PHEVs as well. Um, and that, that's the driving force behind that is the uh, global warming phenomenon which is currently happening, uh, where the world is consuming a lot of carbon-based uh, uh, you know, materials and there's a shift towards uh, moving away from that to more sustainable solutions. Science and technology uh, generally have to do with uh, you know, solving problems. Uh, so uh, as a nation, as a continent, uh, there are a lot of problems we are faced with. Currently, for instance, there's a coronavirus issue, which is a big problem. Um, in that type of problem, you need scientists, um, you need uh, you know, medical doctors, uh, medical health professionals uh, to come up not only with uh, you know, the, 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 the healthcare we need, but also to invent uh, products and, and vaccines which are going to deal with the problem. So the reason we have vaccines today is because you know, there, there were people who had the training, uh, the experience, uh, and the financial backing to, to set up industries which could specifically develop vaccines and solve uh, you know, human uh, problems. So we have a lot of uh, similar you know, types of problems, you know, like for instance, the issue of water and electricity. Those are big problems which we have in Africa generally. I'm currently pursuing my PhD research on metal alloys and they are of great application in automotive parts, turbines, as well as water pipes. Now, in this unit we have infrastructures that assist us in being able to run various types of calculations, software programs to save us, um, and for large calculations, we also have access to Center for High Performance Computing that is based at CSIR offices in Cape Town. Well, my work mainly focuses on phase stability and surface interaction of iron aluminides alloys. And this work is supervised by Professor H.R. Chauke and Professor P. Ingwepe.
while this work will bring about great contribution to industries that mainly focuses on corrosion resistance, whereby we optimize materials for better applications, whereby in order for us to achieve such cases, we're going to have to look at various types of properties in order for us to be able to determine as well as reduce the rate at which corrosion takes place on steel for coating purposes. Now, it was quite a very challenging journey to go through. However, it is not impossible. It just needs persistence and encouragement from family and loved ones and the people that are around you. This will be of great impact. Well, one of the biggest issues is net to it's to never let yourself down, knowing that this is not just about you, but it is about bringing change to the community as well, and knowing that you've brought impact to the community. Now, all I would say is pushing and working hard yields the results, and the world has no room for people who are not ready to take on something different. Science is a different field that has not been pursued by many young women. Now, if you can come out and say, I can do this, is not gender-based. You will say to yourself, okay, this is what I have brought into the world and this is the change that I have brought to the science world and not just as an individual. So with that, I say pursue and hard work you will, read, you, will yield, you will yield results. My name is Biti Shibiri, currently doing a PhD study. And then my research project uh, focuses on uh, a spinel Li MNO uh, nanoparticles for lithium ion batteries uh, as a possible solution for uh, electronics and vehicles. This study is uh, uh, being done at the University of Limpopo Materials Modeling Center and then is being supervised by Dr. R.S. Lidwaba and Professor P. Inwepe. So basically my journey from uh, undergraduate, um, I started my uh, undergraduate at 2012 where I registered for uh, um, subjects in molecular and life sciences because I thought I wanted to be a doctor that was just a dream to be a doctor but what kind of a doctor I was kind of like puzzled so hence I went for uh, molecular and life sciences but then as the journey went on then I realized no I love science but not this kind of science so let me see and do something different than physics was of interest hence I went to the school of mineral um, physical and minerals that's when I did my geology and uh, physics so Going on, I realized that my love for physics grew compared to geology, which took us to the field. And I was not um, a hands-on person to say that maybe going to the field every day. So I loved more the, the, the computational part of it. I enjoyed being in the lab. So physics offered me a platform where I can do research or experiments, but in this case, using computers. So that's where the love started. And then after that, I did my honors uh, in computational physics. And then um, furthering that, I did my master's, which was then uh, converted in 2019 to a PhD study. And then because I had already accumulated a lot of work, so my supervisors and I uh, thought it would be better to take the work and carry on to PhD. So um, encouraging someone who is at home, who wants to do physics um, or who wants to do any kind of science, I would say if I'm talking to somebody who's in high school or going to high school, I would say choose uh, subjects in the STEM field which are uh, physics, uh, science, uh, mathematics, uh, life sciences, yes. For someone who's in high school uh, looking for a challenging career, uh, looking for you know, something which will give them uh, employment uh, after they graduate, uh, science and engineering offer a very uh, strong answer to that because uh, the demand for skills is global. It's not just in South Africa. It's it's uh, you know in Europe, you know, Asia, the United States. 
in Northern America, in South America, everywhere in the world, you know, there's a, there's a need for scientists, for engineers, uh, for people in IT and technology. Uh, so um, the the type of careers we we normally associate with with the type of work we do, uh, you know, people who who are in uh, various types of engineering, so you know, chemical, you know, mechanical, um, uh, because you know, there's not just you know manufacturing the material. There's also you know setting up plants and and you know you know things like that. So you're looking at technicians, um, uh, various uh, types of labor, um, uh, scientists, uh, people who do the research part, uh, developers, but also people who are who are you know, entrepreneurial. And, and business people who you know are going to you know sell products to to the general public um, but you also need um, uh, people who are in government as well to to, to fund uh, a lot of the development work uh, the development work I mean the, the research part of it as well uh, so you need uh, researchers from you know, let's say universities uh, technical uh, institutions so it's, it's a whole range of people who who um, who are going to benefit because it's it's, it's not just um, you know electric vehicles, uh, which is something which is uh, currently taking over in Asia and, and and Northern America, Europe, but not necessarily in Africa. Uh, but it's also the whole issue of uh, where we're we going to get our energy supply and how we're we going to store it. Uh, so that's a big problem throughout Africa, where you know you have a company like Escom which supplies. Uh, not just South Africa, but also in a lot of the neighboring states. Uh, how is you know the average person going to uh, generate electricity and store it, you know, during the day and use it up at night? Um, the, the only way you can do that is if you can store that electricity. And you know, the use of batteries offers a solution to that problem. We are going to proceed to capture what unfolds in the Dimamo Population Health Research Center. Welcome to Dimamo Population Health Research Center. This is the center which has been funded by the Department of Science and Technology in South Africa. The center supports postgraduate students, especially masters and uh, doctoral students in relation to conducting their research. We mainly collect data in relation to demographic surveillance in the community looking at the growing and the challenges which are occurring within our rural communities. The main aim is to assist government in resolving challenges within the rural areas. Students from the University of Limpopo across all faculties are able to use the data which has been collected by our field workers from our study site. The support is in relation to them getting a platform to collect data and also be able to get some assistance in relation to the resources which we have within the center. We are now in our call center agent room, wherein our call center agents, they do collect telephonic data from our households. We've got an approximate population of 100,000, which they are calling on a daily basis. The main data which we collect is the upgrade of the social demographics and also the socioeconomic status. We also look at the births and the deaths which occur in our community. They also do the HIV tests, which they do in the field, and they also do the BMI measurements. Now we will proceed and capture the activities of our indigenous knowledge systems at the University of Limpopo. Uh, my name is Winston Mumalo. I'm an associate professor at the University of Limpopo. My line of research is on uh, medicinal chemistry. So just a brief overview and a short definition of what medicinal chemistry is basically uh, doing chemistry that has biological applications. So our focus is to do chemistry to develop drugs. So we have two ways of doing that. We have what you call the conventional way, which is uh, using our knowledge of science to develop new drugs uh, by either looking at current available uh, drugs on the market which have side effects and then we try to improve them. Uh, obviously we have had our things of resistance so we try to improve on that. Uh, but the second approach 
which we're also doing here at the university, is to rely on nature. And by relying on nature, we make use of plants, which have been used by our ancestors for generations where we know that they work. And so what we do here is to go and uh, test uh, within those plants what is it that is really active. So we have done a number of projects uh, working with uh, various communities, traditional health practitioners from different areas. Uh, just to mention a few, I've worked with uh, Dr. Shati, uh, based in uh, Malamlele. I've worked with uh, Dinda Technologies. I've worked with uh, Inet Health uh, Solutions, where they are currently using um, medicinal plants for, to treat various diseases. So we partner with them uh, through our community engagement, and we uh, work on those plants and basically just uh, validate uh, that they do work and obviously determine what are the biocomponents that are, are responsible for the observed activity. So the nice thing about working with uh, IKS or plants is that plants are known to be uh, less toxic compared to synthetic drugs and also they are easily available so one can all easily find them in the garden, you can plant them in your own garden, you can plant them in the mountains, so they're easy to access and they're relatively cheap compared to drugs which sometimes have to be manufactured in America, manufactured in Europe, and then they have to be shipped and then you have to go to your pharmacy. So by working with communities, we can use our indigenous knowledge to make healthcare uh, very affordable and very, very accessible. So that's the uh, research that we do at the university. We have uh, a, a large group uh, where we train a number of postgraduate students, honor students, uh, how to do the research, how to do the, the validation. And we also work with a number of uh, partners and collaborators within the university who do the biological testing for us. And we also work with other universities for things that we don't have. So for instance, we have uh, collaborations with the University of Cape Town, University of Pretoria, who also assist us uh, with things that we don't have. So we are a fully fledged institution, uh, research unit that uh, has trained to date. Uh, one PhD student has graduated and over 10 master students have graduated under my uh, supervision, uh, working in this area of medicinal chemistry. So uh, for everyone, especially the young kids who have passion on making drugs and trying to find solutions for our country, for our community. You are more than welcome to come and join us at the University of Limpopo. We do have uh, good facilities. We have been fortunate to raise a number of, uh, to get receive uh, grants, which enable us to build our laboratories, to get the equipment, which then allow us to produce state-of-the-art uh, research. Uh, so, as part of the Science Week, uh, the theme being making it possible through science, uh, we just want to encourage the young ones and the public to also consider uh, having science or using science uh, to solve our problems. Uh, just want to encourage the young people that let's do consider science uh, as an option, as a career. Uh, you don't have to do chemistry like we do. Uh, you can also do biological studies where you do the actual testing of the effectivity of those uh, plants. You can do pharmacy where you actually uh, do the prescription of those plants that uh, we've worked with. So there's quite a number of careers that are available, but obviously before you can become that professional chemist or professional bio biologist or professional pharmacist, uh, you need to make sure that you do your, uh, your subjects at high school, maths, English, uh, physical sciences, natural sciences, life sciences, those are the courses that are, are required. We now move on to the highlights that cover the Limpopo Agrofood Technology Station at the University of Limpopo. The objectives of the station are to analyze and test food products to help SMEs turn primary agricultural products into commodities that meet market standards to improve SMEs products, process and development, and also to research on indigenous uh, primary agricultural pro products. The station also offers internships to uh, postgraduates, mainly at the University of Limpopo, which uh, is referred as uh, SCAS skills. 
And also the station receives students for in-service training from different uh, universities in South Africa, which are sponsored by SASC and also DAF. My name is Rita Mufukeng. I am from the Val University of Technology, studying biotechnology, measuring in microbiology. So I've been here for LATS for the last three months doing my in-service training. Um, LATS has exposed me to a lot of stuff. Um, basically what we do uh, a lot in the university, uh, we only taught how to do things manually, but here we are exposed to certain machines, softwares, how to use them. And basically what we do on a normal basis, we test different kind of food samples. So basically, we test to, to, to count uh, different kinds of microorganisms found in food. And that has taught me or actually amplified me to actually start a research of my own that I can introduce like different kind of preservatives or maybe try organic preservatives as compared to the organic ones because of um, the benefits of the organic ones. So. Being here in LADS has actually opened up a new dimension of which I did not or I've never been exposed to at school because mostly it's like theory and applying what you've been taught. But here you test different kind of samples every day. So it's, it's a new and exciting journey for me. My name is Petolo Sibanda. I'm the senior technologist um, of the station. Um, today I'm explaining a bit of the, some of the products that we make um, on the station. We have mayonnaise today um, and the reason for mayonnaise is for us to explain um, what is food emulsion. So food emulsion has been part of the food industry for the longest time. We have milk as an example of a food emulsion which is an oil in water emulsion whereas mayonnaise is a water in oil emulsion. So what we do with the emulsion is that we all know that um, water and oil, they don't mix. So behind the signs, we're trying to mix the two faces so that they can be dispersed. One can be dis dispersed into another. So what we use is an egg yolk. So the egg yolk contains an ingredient called, or a component called a lysithin, where it com it has two components, the hydrophobic and hydrophilic. So it's able to bind to the oil and the water so that they can evenly distribute within one another. So we have the egg yolk as our emulsifier. We have vinegar, which is the main component of mayonnaise, and then we have oil. So we're going to try to mix the two with the addition of the oil and see if they really do mix together. So additional ingredients would be salt. We have other spices if you want to just add in to give it a taste, a better taste. So um, I'm adding a bit of salt. Uh, and then we are adding so a bit of vinegar. So we're going to give it a, a quick stir. When you add the oil into the vinegar, you have to add it drop by drop so that you can break down those drops into smaller droplets so that they can be able to disperse within the vinegar. So if I can get an assistant from your side to add just droplets. This is oil. Jeez. So as you can see, the oil and the vinegar has been combined together and it formed like a thick mayonnaise. So from this now, we have to do analysis. So the first analysis that we look into is sensory an analysis. So we have to check the appearance, we have to check the color, we have to check the taste, the viscosity, if um, the mayo is thick enough. And with this, we use a rheometer. We have an equipment um, in our lab 
that does the viscosity analysis. So it will check if the product will be able to be scooped out within the bottle or not. Will it be able to spread if it's a product that needs to be spread and so forth. Then we look into other analysis such as the water holding capacity. Will the product be able to hold the water for a longer period of time? The oil holding capacity, the foam capacity, is it foaming enough or not? So those are some of the analysis that we do as food scientists. My name is Maureen Mamawolo. I'm the food technologist here at Limpopo Agrofood Technology Station. We've done a lot of um, trainings and uh, assisted a, a lot of people from the community. Just to mention a few, uh, we have uh, trained uh, projects like TM Foods. TM Foods, they have um, a factory in Polokwani. They are making beetroot products, different beetroot products with different flavors. So we assisted them with uh, food safety trainings and also with um, testing and analysis. So we did microbial analysis testing for them and we also did nutritional, nutritional analysis. And another project that we also um, had an effect on their success is Haros Haros. Uh, they came here uh, with an innovation of making a, a sweet potato yogurt product. So they had an idea, but then they didn't know how to make it. So we assisted them with product development project. And after that, then we also uh, did a microbial analysis and also food safety training and nutritional analysis. And now they are selling at different uh, places in Polokwani and also in Routing. They are selling uh, at uh, one of the local supermarkets. We now move on to water purification laboratory, where we will see some very important innovative highlights of university research. In this lab, with, uh, we, with our research, we are focusing on the uh, treatment of wastewater, and then we're trying to recover a clean water there and available uh, products. With available products, we mean the pigments. So with this, we are trying to avoid a, a, a waste that are produced by this uh, reverse osmosis and then our uh, uh, other techniques, such as uh, uh, forward osmosis during the uh, treatment processes. So what we do is we use different alkalis, such as uh, sodium uh, carbonate, magnesium oxide, and calcium carbonate to treat mine water so that we can uh, recover the saleable products and uh, drinking water. So in this lab, we have a uh, reverse osmosis, uh, which can be used, we know which, which can be used to treat that mine water. And then we also have a uh, forward osmosis, which is uh, an imaging technology that can be used because we try to use that forward osmosis to avoid, uh, 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 I mean, to minimize cost because uh, reverse osmosis, it's, 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 it's very uh, uh, costly as, a, as compared to, to our forward osmosis. Uh, there is a potential for us to make a difference through science. There is potential for us to work with communities. There is potential for us to develop industries, to develop uh, manufacturing facilities using our indigenous knowledge systems uh, through partnerships and through science. Uh, so in a nutshell, that is what we do at the University of Limpopo. Thank you for watching this documentary, which has highlighted our flagship programs regarding science, technology, and innovation at the University of Limpopo. Let's continue to make a difference through science as we continue to find solutions for Africa.